American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. This is the Aura Report, new NSF funding for new American discovery. At least 250 million vehicles are on our roads today. From trucks and vans to buses and cars, these vehicles take an enormous amount of fuel to operate each year. Researchers are exploring the use of biofuels as a cost-effective, environmentally friendly alternative to petroleum. Exploring the potential of everything from plant materials to animal fats, renewable biological alternatives are everywhere. Through an NSF R grant, biologist Mark Hildebrand from the Scripps Institution of Oceanography is looking at the energy mechanisms inside tiny marine algae to determine their potential as a promising biofuel. Hildebrand aims to unlock the bioenergy secrets of algae, known as diatoms, and find ways to maximize their production of fatty oils, or lipids, that can be developed to power everything from cars to jets. The potential effect of climate change on the spread of infectious disease, like malaria and dengue fever, could impact the lives of millions of people. Researchers discovered that daytime temperature fluctuations alter both malaria parasite development in mosquitoes and disease transmission rates. But poor understanding of the relationship between transmission and environmental limits leaves researchers unable to successfully measure the risk, until now. A research team from Penn State plans to evaluate the effect of temperature variation on transmission rates and to develop new climate models to predict disease risk. The project, backed by a $1.9 million NSFRA grant, will allow scientists to better understand the influence of global warming on the distribution and dynamics of infectious diseases and develop practices for disease prevention and control. Turning on a light, watching TV, surfing the net. These things all take energy. And by 2050, estimates show global power consumption tripling. So as scientists, we need to come up with scientifically viable alternatives to fossil fuels. Each of the options, with the exception of solar, have scalability issues. Today, electricity produced by solar panels costs two to three times as much as electricity produced by coal. But a team of chemists, mathematicians, and engineers, headed by James McCusker at Michigan State University, have a plan. Backed by an ARA NSF-funded $1.9 million grant, the team hopes to improve solar power capabilities by developing a more efficient, inexpensive solar cell alternative to silicon. The amount of energy hitting the Earth's surface from the sun in one hour is basically equal to the energy consumption of mankind in the course of a year. Obviously, we can't access all that energy, but it represents an enormous resource. And nature figured that out a long time ago because nature uses sunlight and water as its two primary sources of energy. The science to get to that point is incredibly difficult, and there are a lot of really talented people around the world working on various aspects of that problem. The stuff that we've been supported by uh, recently by NSF through the ARA money, and as well as other research from my group from the Department of Energy, are both looking at different aspects of how to make solar energy more efficient, but do so from the perspective of Earth-abundant materials so that we can think about scalability. That's the Arrow Report. I'm Dina Headley.